Hi, today I would like to share how you could possibly produce a better image of the moon even with a DSLR camera. When you take a single shot image of the moon and try to enhance it in Photoshop or maybe Lightroom, you will soon realize that there is a limitation on how far you can improve the image quality. Soon you will realize that the image will become grainy or we call it noisy in terms of digital imaging. This is because when the camera sensor is capturing the, the light or the bottom from the subject, it also creates noise at the same time. These noise are mainly the thermal noise due to the heat, high temperature on the sensor, and also the electronic noise caused by the electric current acting on the sensor. How far you can enhance the image depends on the ratio between the signal and the noise, which we call it the signal to noise ratio, in short SNR. You can read more about this digital image noise and also the signal to noise ratio on the internet. Link to the advance of the digital imaging processing software nowadays, we can produce a cleaner image with a high, low noise level using a process we call stacking. This process basically requires you to take a lot of uh, shot of the same object and integrate all the signal while keeping the noise level low. So the higher the, the higher the signal to noise ratio, the greater you can enhance the image. The more shot you take, the better result you will get after the stacking. So typically you will need to take at least 20 to 30 shots uh, or maybe 50. In my case, I usually take up to 100 shots. So to take this large number of shots, if you are using a DSLR with a long focal length lens of at least 500mm or above uh, on a normal tripod, the first limitation is that you have to rely on the autofocus function of the camera in order to get a sharp image of the moon. And the second is that during the long duration of taking so many shots, the moon would have drift across the, the field of view. So you may need to use the high speed imaging function of the camera to take as many shots as possible in a short time. In order to get a better focusing, I would recommend you use the DSL camera with the lens on a star tracker. A simple star tracker will allow you to track on the moon without it drifting away so you can take a little bit more time to do the focusing. And better still, if you want to do an even higher resolution, a higher uh, magnification image of the moon, you can attach your camera to a telescope. Okay, for that, you will need to have two adapters. One is called a T-ring, one is called a T-adapter, in, in order to attach your camera to the telescope. To take the large number of shots automatically, you can either use an intervalometer or you can use a computer using the software that can control your camera. But in my case, I'm using a Canon camera, so I use the EOS utility. The biggest advantage of using a laptop and the software is that I can view the zoom in image of the moon more clearly and bigger on the computer screen so that I can achieve possibly achieve a better focusing on the moon. As for the setting of the camera, the first is to have you use the lowest ISO setting possible for your camera. In my case, I go for ISO 100. You use the lowest ISO in order to keep the noise level at the minimum. As for the exposure setting, it depends on the face of the moon you are capturing. Just want to make sure the bright part of the moon is not overexposed. And also an important thing is to make sure you capture in the raw format. So after you have done capturing the number of shots you intended, the next step we are going to do is to convert all these raw images into the TIFF format. This is because the software we are going to use for stacking will not handle the raw format. So we are going to convert it to the TIFF format. I use the Photoshop software or you can also use the Lightroom flash processing for which I'm not so familiar with. So I personally I always use Photoshop. So file, run the script of image processor. And you select the folder where you have all your raw images. And then on the second step, you can save in the same location. Or you can create a uh, folder for the converted image. And then third, on the third step, you are going to save as TIFF. And you run. So it will open up the first image where you can apply the standard or typical uh, processing the enhancement to your liking.
so if the same setting is going to be applied to all the images so if I take 100 what I do on this particular image is going to be applied on the, the, the other 199 uh, image so after you are happy with the image just click open So we're going to process the photo one by one and it's going to take a while. And if you check, there's a one new photo folder called the tip folder where all the converted image is. So after you have converted all the raw images to tip format, you have all these images here inside the folder. The next we are going to stack this image together. For that we use a software called Auto Stacker. You can download it free, it's free, it's free software. So to open the image file, you can either use the open dialog, go to the folder containing your photos and make sure you select image file. You select all, click on one image, select all and open. Or you can just select all the image in the folder and drop, drag and drop them into the software. Okay, make sure you select the planet mode. And before you proceed, at this stage, you may want to check through all your images for some maybe bad shot or whatsoever, so that you know roughly how many good shots you take for the stacking. So for to do this, you click on this frame marker and use an arrow to apply an arrow to browse through the images to look for any bad image if there is any. Or you can just roughly estimate and decide how many frames you want to stack. So in this case, I'm taking 102 images, so I can just stack 100 or 90 or 80. Or if you want to check through this, uh, just go to the images one by one. In my case, I'll just stack them all. So the next step is we click on analyze. So for this step, the software is going to analyze the images, all the images, to check for their quality. Sort them accordingly. It's going to take a while. And by the way, since we are shooting the using a DSLR at full frame size, the image may be very large. So if your if the moon if is not fill up the whole frame during conversion, you may want to crop the image so that the, to not include the blank space around it. In that case, you will get a smaller image size and the processing will be faster. So after the analyze step is completed. So we want to set the how many frames you want to stack. In this case, I'll go for 100 and make sure the resulting file format is TIFF. We want to re maintain the quality uncompressed. Okay. Then we want to reduce the size of the image so that I can see the full moon. Next, we are going to put the alignment box onto the image. For this case, depending on your on the size the image scale of your image, the alignment we try to get around uh, between 50 to 100 alignment box. So usually, for my case, I'll usually try to go with the largest box possible. But from my experience, in my case for the moon, I'm going to need a bigger box. So you can just adjust a big box here. But the maximum I'm going to go is about 400. So what I do is just after I set the box size, I just place a P grid going to put the boxes around uh, all over the image. So in my case, you can see I end up with 340 alignment points. Uh, of uh, Basically, the more points you have, the more accurate is the stacking. But usually, anything, uh, the number between 50 and 100 is enough. So in my case, this is the least I can get since the maximum size I can get is about 400 due to the image scale. So after the alignment point placement is done, what we do next is just to stack it. So again, this is going to take some time. So after the stacking process is done, you check back your folder where you have the raw files. So you will see one new file, new image file with the name. In my case, is F100, indicating I'm stacking 100 frame. The file name may appear differently for you, depends on the your setting in the in the auto stacker. So at this stage, you can basically for proceed to open this file in Photoshop for a little bit further enhancement. But for me, I would still like to use another software to do a little bit more sharpening. The software I'm going to use is called the Registex. Registex this software is originally designed to do uh, stacking and also sharpening at the same time. 
but uh, nowadays the software auto stacker which we used before this is do a much better job in terms of stacking so for Registack uh, most of the time is being used for sharpening so to do that I just open this file and drag and drop it into Registack you will bypass or skip all the stacking processes and go straight to the sharpening step If the image is large, you may take some one and get it. So at this stage, you can see that all this slider at the, at the left is where you are going to apply the sharpening to a different area of the image. So let's say I'm going to go to an area where we have a lot of craters. I can view a zoom view. Okay. Press on the control key as you can see here and move around. There's some place where I can clear it. Then for my personal practice, I use the link with that. I just play around with the slider, so I just enhance it a little bit. Maybe a little bit more. If you don't see any changes in this zoom panel, it may be because you are uh, the, the processing area is not shown. So I can click on this part so that the processing area is set onto this. You can see now uh, this is the result of the sharpening. So you can see it's obviously too much sharpening. So I just put the slider down back. So if you start to see some noise show up, you can use this this noise, the, the, this the noise function. So if you are too sharp, then you can just put a sharpen. So you just play around with the combination. So uh, usually I will start with the layer two, where uh, accord, according to some resources, it contains most of the information. While layer one contains most of the noise. So after you are done with layer two, you go to layer one. You repeat the same step. Okay. You, Drag the slider so until you can see some noise turn up, then you just denoise. If it's a bit too soft, just sharpen it. So, all the, the parameter you use here is very subjective to your personal taste as long as the image looks okay to you. Okay, you just play around with the slider. Usually, I will just use the layer 2, layer 1, and then maybe a little bit of layer 3, sometimes not. So, if you are happy with the result, you can see the shape. Okay, you just do all. To, because just now we are only uh, applying the stepping onto a small area where which we call the processing area when you do all it's going to apply the sharpening onto the whole image you can see the progress bar here so it depends on the image scale so let's say if you are happy with the result after do all the progress bar is completed 100 percent you just save the image with a different name to differentiate between the, the one before applying sharpening and after sharpening so after we do the sharpening using the register text, I'm going to open this one using the Photoshop. So the first step, I'm going to rotate this image. So during the, the, the imaging process, uh, in order to fit the whole moon of this face into the whole field of view, I rotated my camera so that the north is to the right. So conventionally, we try to put all our images so that the north is up. So I'm going to rotate this 90 degree clockwise. So now the moon is up, and uh, you can see here the terminator is very close to the edge. So I may want to expand the image a little bit. Okay, at this stage, I'm going to make a uh, duplicate image of the uh, layer. The shortcut key is Ctrl Z. Um, I, for my own uh, preference, I uh, my my own processing habit. I usually I will try to go into using apply the camera roll filter one more time to do a little bit very very slight adjustment if there is any need for that. So, so let's see if we need any adjustment on this. So I'm going to increase the contrast a little bit. The highlight, reduce the highlight a little bit. So this is again, this is very subjective. Step to your personal taste. Okay, if you're happy with it, just okay. So basically, this will be a final image of your uh, of the 
of the imaging session we will take on the moon but before we end I'm going to show you another another process that is to create the mineral moon as you can see here moon we always assume that the moon is gray color gray in color is colorless okay we always assume the moon is in gray color but actually the moon contains a little bit of color information but we need to enhance the image greatly in order to show the color this color is due to some mineral, the presence of some mineral on the lunar surface. So to do that, we add an adjustment layer called the hue and saturation. For this, we are going to increase the value to 30. We can just cut in 30. Okay, you can go for a smaller step, maybe 10 or 5. Okay? But the, the smaller step you increase, because we are going to repeat this step, this uh, hue and saturation adjustment multiple times in order to show the result. For example, I just duplicate this layer, duplicate again, duplicate it. You can see that the color is slowly showing up. So up to one stage, if you think it's too much, you just step back again. So like in this case, I'm going to apply the same setting of 30 point five times. You can see that the color on the moon slightly show up. Okay. Another thing you want to mention is that remember in the earlier of the tutorial, I mentioned that when shooting the moon, we try to use the lowest, uh, the lowest. Uh, ISO setting possible, like in my case ISO 100. If you use a high ISO during this process, you are going to realize that you, the image will easily get noisy after you apply the saturation one time or two times. So it's very important if you want to do achieve this, uh, create this mineral image of the moon, it's very important that you use the lowest ISO setting possible for your camera. Like I said just now, if you start with the 30, like I say, maybe you just need to repeat the step four or five times. If you go for a smaller scale, maybe 10, then you're going to duplicate the, the saturation process maybe a few more times in order to achieve the result you want. So if you want to compare the one before and after, you can group this together. Just hide it to show this is before saturation. This is the gray color, more the colorless moon that we are used to. And this is the one that shows the, the color information of the moon. So it's up to you whether you want to do the color version or just a normal version. Usually, uh, whenever the, the situation allows, I'm going to do two. So, so that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Thank you for watching.